You might not know this, but your resume, at least a typical resume, goes through several hands through various phases during its life. And what we're going to talk about in this video right here is those different phases and what it actually goes through. So where does your resume go? We're going to look at what the possibilities are. We're going to look at the 10 second scan, the 30 second scan, and a potential hidden agenda. All these things that your resume has to overcome. First up, where does your resume go? Lots of resumes are sent out every year, right, to a whole bunch of companies. But only a very few of them actually make it to the interview stage. In fact, like I said before, usually about 1,100 uh, resumes get sent in for one job. Now, what if you were a recruiter and you had to fill you know, one job, you've got 1,100 resumes to deal with, right? Well, what if you had 50 positions to fill? <laughs> now it gets pretty serious, right? So for that reason, one of the first things that happens with most resumes is electronic screening. And with electronic screening, there is basically just uh, your resume is scanned, it's OCR'd, uh, where they go in and they try to detect the fonts and characters and uh, decide what kind of words are on there, and then it's looked, you know, it's looked at for just layout basically, and if it has the content that they think would be pertinent. So your resume can get eliminated in that electronic scan phase, but most resumes are going to make it through that part, right? Now recruiters are kind of like a funnel in a recruiter situation. A company has decided that they don't want the hassle of uh, actually having to go through the resumes and find somebody who matches up. So recruiters actually have a database of thousands of resumes. And they pretty much want anybody to send in a resume because there's always a possibility that they could match that up with uh, a company, whatever they happen to be looking for. So recruiters don't really care about you individually. They care about having a huge database of, uh, you know, potential job applicants so that they can more accurately match up exactly what their, uh, the hiring company is looking for. For example, they might, the hiring company might uh, say, you know, we want somebody with this particular skill set. We don't necessarily care if they've got a good work history because we don't really need to keep them around. We might not keep them around. We just want somebody that knows how to do this and we can put them on the job and if it doesn't work out, we'll just let them go. So they, recruiters actually want, you know, all kinds of resumes just so that they're able to fill the multiplicity of different positions that come to them. Now, HR staff are other people that might be doing the job of a recruiter. They might be receiving resumes. They might be taking care of even some of the interviewing. They could do a lot of stuff. But the problem is HR people do have a lot of jobs. They've got to fire people. They've got to investigate uh, complaints within the company. They've got to deal with staffing. They've got a bunch of stuff. So since HR people uh, deal so much with people and a lot of negativity, they are inherently negative themselves. They, uh, you know, in dealing with you, they're going to be kind of apprehensive. They're going to be suspicious, even like, what trouble is this person going to be causing me? Uh, because ultimately, that is the fact. You know, if you come in there and you've got social issues, you're going to cause them problems. Now, whether they are the first person to receive your resume and look it over, or uh, they're the last. Eventually, if your resume floats around in the company, it's going to eventually land on someone, uh, someone's desk in HR because they are, again, ultimately the people that deal with a lot of this stuff. And, and uh, most big companies want somebody in HR to check it out, scrutinize it, find out, you know, what is this person hiding? Uh, they, you know, again, they deal with a whole lot of people. One sad thing that you have to be aware of, the potential 
that your resume could end up is in the hands of a receptionist or administrative assistant. Now, not that these are bad people or that you know there's anything wrong with them. It's just a fact that most receptionists don't know very much about uh, you know the different jobs that we could be applying for. They don't know a lot of details. They don't know keywords. They don't know industry specifics. They don't know a lot of stuff. That's really not their job, and it's not to be expected. But the sad thing is they are a lot of times the person who receives that application uh, or the resume. So, for example, you go online, you find a company, it says, you know, would you like to submit a resume, and you do that online. A lot of times that gets forwarded to a receptionist or an administrative assistant. What they're going to do is actually look at it and <laughs> based on what it looks like, uh, maybe some keywords, then uh, they're going to make a decision whether or not to forward that. Your potential supervisor could very easily end up with your resume. A lot of times they will. So what we're talking about here is the different hands that could grab hold of your resume while it's going through the company before you actually get to the phase where you know any kind of decisions really are made as far as actually interviewing you. A lot of, lot of uh, different potential right here, right? Hiring manager, the one who's actually going to do the hiring. Very possible that they will, uh, you know, get to check out your resume before an interview is conducted. All of these people could be one person. And what I mean by that is some smaller companies even some medium-sized companies might bundle some of this stuff together. So somebody in HR, they might do the hiring. They might do the interviewing. They might do everything. In fact, I was hired to a job which was a pretty medium-sized company. It was by no means a small company. And the HR person there did all of this. Uh, so that is a possibility. A lot of times it will be different people, especially with larger companies, but it is possible that they will do you know, everything. So the 10-second scan, this is, uh, this is one of the most critical <laughs> things. You're not going to believe this because remember I was talking about the receptionist? Well, a lot of times that receptionist is the first person to see your resume or maybe an administrative assistant. So the thing is here, they're going to base their decision on whether or not to pass your resume along or to go ahead and trash it, right? Or as they would say, put it in the file. Well, they're going to base that on aesthetics, the way that it looks, and possibly they'll look for some keywords. That's about it. So you have got 10 to 15 seconds to make your impact. And let me tell you how you do that. On the resume itself, you would think people start at the top and they just read the whole thing, right? Uh, nope, not right. Most people, about the top third of the page, if you went down to the bottom of the top third, that is where their eyes focus and they start reading. If you want to make your impact, you got to do it right there. Because you've only got about 10, 15 seconds of them looking at your page before they make a decision to either go on and look more detailed or go ahead and pitch it. That's it. 10 seconds to make your sales pitch. What you want to do is list specific qualifications and phrases that would be easily recognizable. The problem is, let's say that you're applying for a position that's very technical, okay? And in that being technical, there are some skills that you definitely have to have in order to do that job. So you have got experience exactly doing that very thing. And in the past, you've got excellent examples of accomplishing the goal. If, though, you put on there that you know last year you were able to accomplish doing you know setting up whatever setting up a new website or something like that however you do not list the you know the programming languages that you had to know in order to accomplish that goal to the receptionist who has no clue about your job 
your resume is going to seem irrelevant. To maybe somebody who would be your hiring manager, they might know that in order for you to do that job, you had to know X, Y, Z, you know, whatever. However, it hasn't made it that far yet. It's only in the hands of a receptionist who has been told to look for certain qualifications before passing that resume on. The reason is they want to interview just a few people, not the whole 1,100 that are applying for that position. Okay, so this receptionist or this administrative assistant is looking for some specific things that show that you are qualified for that job. So you have to make sure that in that location, you're going to hit directly what it is that they're hiring for and show with you know, any necessary keywords or phrases that would uh, make an impact and show that you are capable of doing that. If you do pass the 10-second scan, that means that they have looked at the page and they have decided, you know, this is, uh, this is something that I find interesting. I need to look into it further. Then you're going to get the 30-second scan. Now, this may or may not be done by the same person. If it's done by the same person, they'll have just decided to go ahead and give you some more time and they'll look into it a little bit more. Or that initial person will say, okay, this merits some further investigation and they will pass it on to the next person who then will give it the 30-second scan. This is usually an HR person because this HR person is there to protect the company. Remember what I said about them looking for... Uh, you know, people that are going to give them a hard time. That's exactly what they're doing here. They're wanting to see uh, if, you know, there, there looks like something in that resume that you might be somebody difficult to deal with or that you might be somebody that causes some problems. You know, they might look at some personal information. They might look at your hobbies maybe. They might look at work history. They could look at a whole bunch of different things. HR employees, by and large, are very skeptical because, again, if uh, you get hired there and you're a bad apple, you can cause them a lot of problems. And their job really is to protect the company. They're trying to, you know, that's why it's called um, human resources. They're dealing with people. They're looking for personality. They're looking for professionalism. They want to make sure that you're, you know, not some Yahoo. They're looking for honesty, integrity. They're looking for dedication. These things are qualities that, as an employer, you want your employees to have. Right? If you were an employer, wouldn't you want them, the people that work in for you, wouldn't you want them to have this so you didn't have to worry about that they were ripping you off or that they were doing a poor job or that they were selling secrets to your competitor, right? You want to know that this is somebody that you can trust and they're doing the same thing. That HR uh, person, the person that's doing the hiring as well, they're only going to succeed if you actually fit the bill. So if you pass the 30-second scan, this is why they're so skeptical and critical, because if you pass that 30-second scan, you are pretty much, that's a slam dunk for an interview. And that means, you know, basically less than one half of 1% of all resumes submitted are going to make it past the 30-second scan. That's how serious it is. So by them letting you pass, you they have essentially said, he's okay, she's okay. And they're, they're kind of putting their necks out on the line. So if you don't fit the bill and if you are a troublemaker, you know, if you cause problems, that makes them look like an idiot later on. So that's why they're so careful. Ah, the hidden agenda. This is a potential that you've got to be aware of. There's really nothing that you can do about it To, uh, for the most part. There are some things you can be careful with, but for the most part, some of this stuff is just out of your hands. So you got to be aware that it could happen. If your resume looks threatening, you might not, uh, that's supposed to say make it, but... Uh, Anyhow, we'll just have to go with making it. <laughs> um, let me tell you what I mean. Let's say 
your uh, your resume past the receptionist 10 scan 10 second scan it goes to somebody in HR they give it the 30 second scan it looks pretty good they go ahead and they take that they'll pick it up just take it right to the hiring manager or your potential supervisor they'll take it and they'll say here I think this person is qualified for the job that you are trying to fill they look at it and they see a whole bunch of experience and skills that offset their own skills and experience like that you maybe know a whole lot of stuff and you're probably pretty good and maybe uh, you challenge their position even that could be a bad thing for you more than likely it will be they might say you know I don't know he looks like he's not gonna really be a team player because he looks like you know he's mr. big shot and this and that uh, and that's sad because it could hurt you and the company. You know, the company could possibly benefit from what you're able to do for them, but you'll never get the opportunity uh, because of that hidden agenda. And again, that's just something that sometimes it happens and nothing you can do really. This one, stereotyping. This is something that unfortunately is very real and uh, it's unfair a lot, but it does happen. If they recently had an employee that belonged to a certain club or membership or uh, some type of organization and you happen to belong to that same club or organization and you put it on your resume unconsciously, they're going to link the two of you. And if that employee, if they had problems with him, you're going to be a problem. Uh, fortunately, it works the opposite direction, so you got a 50-50 chance. <laughs> if they have somebody who is one of their best employees and they are somehow associated with you, there's going to be some stereotyping there, and they're, it's going to work in your favor. They're going to say, okay. you know, They might not say it out loud. They might not even think it. It'll just be like a subconscious thing, and it's something that people do. I would even go as far as to say it's somewhat natural. Because you you know if you went to one college and somebody else went to another college, you're just gonna think that you're, you know they're the same. They're they're going to be similar. If they're if the one is lazy, then the other one's probably going to be lazy too. That kind of thing. Uh, and it's not always true. I know it's not. Usually, in fact, it's not. But stereotyping just happens. So you got to deal with it. How how can we deal with that? Well, be careful with what you put on your resume. Only put things that really you think are pertinent. I know. There was a lot of talk in the past about putting a lot of hobbies and, uh, you know, putting personal things on your resume. But really, if it's not relevant, I don't, I don't mind that people put a little bit of stuff on there. But be real careful and selective. Because if that links you to somebody else that they have, they have had issues with in the past, that's going to be something that you're going to have to overcome. And you might not even be aware of it for a very long time. Hiring managers want the following things. They want a truly qualified prospect. Somebody that can really do the job. They want someone who's easy to work with. And I'm not talking about, you know, they don't want they don't want to be buddies and go out hang out with you on the weekends or something. That's not what we're talking about. Just somebody who's easy to work with, somebody who takes direction somebody who takes initiative, somebody who does not cause problems with other employees. That's what they're looking for. And they want someone who's not going to make them look bad. If they make that decision to interview you, and then they go ahead and make the decision to hire you for a variety of things, you cannot make them look bad. That's what they're scared of. That's what they're... Like, that puts a mark on them. If they hire you and you're a drunk and you can't hardly come into work without being drunk, or they hire you and you're late all the time, they hire you and your products that you're supervising are constantly uh, you know, sub substandard, you can't do the job maybe, that makes them look bad. That's a mark against them that's going to stay with them for a long time. So understand that the person that's hiring you, they've got a lot of things to consider uh, because ma in making that decision, they're affecting their own future, really, in a sense. So here's the hurdles that we need to overcome. Your resume is going to get sent out. 
It's got to pass the electronic scan. We want to make sure that uh, it's got keywords on there so that it does. And we want to make sure that it's laid out in a very legible fashion. No super fancy fonts. You get a super fancy font on there and it might not get, uh, you know, what, the way this works with the electronic scanning is when they scan it in, then the computer goes through and tries to identify the letters and then make words and all that kind of stuff. Not just graphics, but actual text now so that the computer can read it. If you got all kinds of wacky fonts, then that's going to cause you, uh, you know, it's going to cause the scanner problem. So it's going to cause you problems because your resume will just get rejected because it's not, it doesn't have, you know, enough actual information on it that the computer can read it. The 10 second scan usually going to be done by a receptionist or an administrative assistant or someone like that. This is just a very cursory exam. Remember, it has to hit home. It has to, your resume has to look nice, layout, easy to read, no super big long paragraphs, just short sentences, short and sweet to the point. And uh, if you pass that, then it's going to go on to the 30 second scan where much more. Uh, you know, digging into it to see if there is really something here that could benefit the company. And then if it passes that 30-second scan, it's pretty much a slam dunk that you're going to get an interview.